Farid Bignetu was the self-proclaimed emir of Butte Chamon, a name taken from this sprawling park located in a working class neighborhood of northeast Paris, where we met him. So this was the park where you trained people? Yes. Uh, Bignetu is now 37 years old and at least five years removed from his life as a charismatic, self-taught preacher of jihad. I'm from Al-Qaeda. He says he joined Al-Qaeda right after 9-11. And it was the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq in 2003 that helped fuel the rise of his cell. He organized his followers into a homegrown terrorist group of about 10 members. And these, they were all radicalized? All radicalized, yes, of course. At the time, he says America was the number one enemy, and he set up a pipeline to send radicalized French Muslims to Al-Qaeda in Iraq to help kill the infidels. Yeah. For fighting, only for fighting. Ag also. Against English and Americans? American only. Only Americans? Only Americans, yes. His most famous recruit was a young French orphan named Sharif Kouachi. Kouachi's name would become known to the world some 10 years later for carrying out one of the most horrific crimes in modern French history, the attack on the French satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo. Farid Bignetu was his first mentor. You armed him, his mind, yes, as yes, a weapon. Exa exactly, yes. Bignetu agreed to sit down with us as long as he could cover his eyes for his security. Did you feel that you had a, a sense of blood on your hands? J'aurais toujours aimé dire que j'ai... I wish I could have said that at the time I had turned the page and had nothing to do with this, but the reality would catch up with me. I transmitted this ideology, and when one does that, one transmits death, one transmits destruction. So, inevitably, I have blood on my hands. Farid Bignetu's terrorist group was broken up by French police in 2005, one day before Kouachi was to depart for Iraq. Both were convicted of criminal association with a terrorist enterprise. Bignetu says jail exposed him to different points of view and slowly changed his mind. He was just 15 when he first became radicalized. Everything I was aspiring to was that one day, finally on this earth, we could live under Islamic law, to stop injustice, to make the world a better place. By the time he was in his early 20s, he was actively radicalizing others. You were arming the people that you were training with an ideology for them to commit acts of terror in order to accomplish their goals. That was exactly my role during all these years, to teach them the ideology, give them the justification. They wanted to fight but still had some doubts and I was trying to answer their questions so they would go through with their actions. A part of your teaching, martyrdom? Oh, yes. Absolutely. French media reported that three of his followers died in a suicide bombing in Iraq. Bignetu says he lost track of his Muslim recruits, but he is quick to point out that he never called for violence on French soil, which he says has become the new battleground for many radicalized French Muslims. They hate this country. They hate this country. They hate this country. But they live in this country. Yes. But why do they hate this country? Because uh, they think uh, in this country you, there is big uh, segregation uh, against uh, the Muslims. Bignetu says he doesn't want Muslims to be seen as victims in France and says the real question is what's driving these young people to want to commit attacks in the first place. Inevitably, every time there is an attack, it makes me want to do more to stop the attacks, to share my journey, to help young people think this over. That's the message each attack sends me, that we don't do enough to stop this. Now the man who radicalized one of France's most infamous terrorists has written a book and is working with the country's leading de-radicalization expert to try and convince jihadis to change before it's too late. Now, I cannot tell you that there is a magic remedy, but there is a lot that can be done to save people and stop them from getting into something worse than they're already into. Some will see this and they won't believe you. You know that. They think once a terrorist, always a terrorist. Are they wrong? 
I think that's one of the biggest mistakes one could make. The first ingredient we need in order to take somebody out of this ideology is to believe you can do it.